Hello everybody, welcome back to Candid Football Conversations. This is Rahul from Sports Cubby. I've got Arunava Chaudhary from Arun Foot. Arunava, I know you said this before we got on, it's been a quiet few days for Indian football, but uh, there's something to look forward to. We've got India taking on Kuwait in the World Cup qualifiers a couple of days from now. Uh, Gokulam Kerala women have registered a monumental victory. So uh, a couple of things that we can talk about and uh, we'll quickly run through them and sort of bring everything together in about a 10 to 12 minute uh, space so that everyone can listen and uh, stay updated about Indian football. The first thing I wanted to address on our is Gokulam Kerala beating uh, Bangkok FC 4-3, a thriller, their first win of their AFC uh, Women's Club Championship campaign. Uh, what do you, what does this mean for um, Gokulam Kerala women and for Indian football? First of all, a belated happy Diwali to everyone who's watching. Uh, and you. yeah, and uh, also to you, Rahul, as well. It's a big victory. Uh, we've had a lot of losses, heavy defeats in the last few weeks when it comes to women's football, beat the national team, beat Kokulam Kerala as well. And it shows that we theoretically are in a position, plus minus the foreigners, to be able to, we should be able to compete with the Thailands with the Chinese Taipei's uh, of this yeah. world. Kokulam Kerala, the women's team finishing second behind Urawa. Red Diamonds is a very, very commendable job, a huge achievement for Anthony Andrews and his team. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a good finish. And hopefully uh, next year when the AFC starts, the Women's Champions League, a team from India will be there in, in some sort of form where I know most likely we will play qualifiers. But the important thing is that we're there. And, and again, to, to be able to, to first of all, to, to draw against Chinese Taipei's Hua Lin is already an achievement. And then, of course, beating Bangkok in a thriller 4-3 Finishing second in the group uh, behind yeah. clear favourites, Urawa Red Diamonds, is a big, big achievement for Gokulam Kerala women's team. Just the one loss, Arunava, what do you make of that as well? I mean, uh, I know it was a heavy defeat, but then come back and then you draw your next game and then win the next. I think the first one, the loss, uh, was uh, sadly, we'll have to say, as expected. I think that if we are trying yeah. to compare ourselves with the Japanese in the women's game, be it national team or club, we are nowhere near. And that was a simply exposed period. The next two games were more important for us. Again, well in to get a draw is already a good achievement. And then, of course, to beat Bangkok in that thriller um, is a big, big one for Indian women's football. And I hope the positives now come more than the negatives. Again, we've got the I a double L starting in a few weeks. So I hope we, we're going to be back on track with some more better news of Barangardic women's football in India. It's nice to see that the Indian uh, women's football um, scene is sort of you know, it is is better than what we were discussing to be a couple of weeks back. It's just nice and uh, nice positivity. But the big one, Arnava, is India Kuwait, an away game, of course, our first one for this uh, World Cup qualification campaign. Uh, we've spoken a lot about this. A lot of people even saying that the Kuwait game is more important than the Qatar one at home um, because of India's sort of shaky away form. Uh, how do you see this one panning out? Well, I think it's India's biggest match of the year. I think India in Kuwait is the biggest game. Um, I forget the Qatar game at home. I think, you know, if we can get a result out of that, that's a bonus. I think Kuwait is our opponent in this group. And therefore, we have to see in some sort of form way, if we can get a result out of this, be it a draw or maybe even a win, we would have the ideal start into this campaign and we can target that second place. Our aim has to be amongst the best 18 teams in Asia going into the third and final round of the qualifiers. That has to be our aim. I know we've spoken a lot about injuries and, you know, mm -hmm. that, that Anwar Ali is missing, that uh, Jigson is missing, that Ashik is missing. That's behind us. I think Sunil said it very well um, yesterday in an interview. said, listen, I thought about it. We thought about it. We can't change it. We have to live with the players we have. Most important is that our coach is called back, Apuya. I hope he plays him. I hope Apuya is able to showcase for the national team what he's been able to showcase for Mumbai City, especially against what he played against Al Hilal in those two games. And then let's see, I, Kuwait will want to come at us, want to have a go at us uh, after the, the, the loss in the SAF Cup final and um, hoping for a good game and a positive result for us. Yeah, I know it's, it's probably easier said than done to leave injuries behind, but realistically looking at the situation, uh, do you see India sort of getting a result from Kuwait? We have to get some sort of result. If we lose this game and we lose a few days later against Qatar, we'll already be under a lot of pressure going into the matches in March. So therefore, some sort of result in Kuwait City would help us. Our away form is a big, big worry. If we see how we played in the Kings Cup, how we played in the Medeka Cup, yeah, it's a big, big concern. But um, 
you know, I'm banking on Sunil and the boys to hopefully get us a result. In terms of approach, Arunava, because uh, we saw the that India's last away game was against Malaysia in the Kings Cup. In terms of approach, is there anything that you would say we should do dif- uh, probably differently, or we should we go at Kuwait, go for those, you know, uh, try and take those early chances like we did against Malaysia? It was the Medeka Cup. Just a small correction. You said Kings. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Happens. Um, I think the learnings from the Malaysia game is clearly how is your defensive unit? I think our attacking unit is amongst the best we've had in a few years. With If you look at Sunil, you've got behind him Mahesh, Sahal and uh, Changte. I think that's the, amongst the best we've had. Our defensive unit is going to be key. The question is, who is going to partner Sandesh Chinga and who are my wingbacks and who, who's playing in my defensive midfield? That is the big, big question. And I hope Igor finds the right answer to that. And, and you know, we, we, we play with a, with a solid unit because that was our biggest problem um, a few weeks ago in Malaysia where we clearly conceded four. We could have conceded six, seven, but we could have scored five or six as well, right? So therefore, that's a positive with that attacking unit. My defensive structure, my defensive unit with the addition of Abuya, does it give, does it add stability? And the question is, who's going to be my second centre back? Is it going to be Metab? Is it going to be Chunnunga? Might I even go for Rahul Beke? We will have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So that's that. I think we're only two days away and uh, it's sort of heating up now. It's it's getting closer. It's uh, it's almost there and uh, everybody, I'm sure, will tune in to watch India-Kuwait, the important game for the nation. The I-League, Arnava, is, uh, again, a lot of people are very uh, happy with the I-League, the way it's gone so far and some cracker of games again in the early. How have you taken to the tournament so far? Are you enjoying it? First of all, um, you know, again, we've had a little bit of controversy regarding to the broadcast, you know, certain yeah. matches being broadcast, not all being broadcast. And uh, yeah, it's good to see, um, you know, on the other side that Interkashi as well as Namdhari getting their first wins as ID clubs. Um, Interkashi actually the first win, official win actually since the creation of the club a few months back. Um, so those are those are very very positive, very very good signs to see, um, and most probably as expected, uh, the big teams are are, are up there, right? Um, mm-hmm. Gokulam Kerala Mohammed Sporting on ten points, where you know you would have expected them to be. Uh, Srinidhi is is third in the table, even though Srinidhi lost surprisingly at home to to Aizol FC. Um, while as expected, the the Manipur clubs are struggling. You know, Niroka and uh, um, Trao both are still winless in the league. Um, not playing at home, playing in Kolkata, having their own set of problems due to the issues that they are currently in in, in Manipur. Um, while again, you've got Rajasthan, you've got Aizol, Shilong, Namdari, Intakashi, uh, who, who are doing okay. Delhi FC also has had its first win uh, as an I-League club. Uh, Shilong Lajong has had the first win as a as a club, uh, sorry, hasn't had a, a win so far. Um, as, as a club, they've had three draws. Um, Churchill Brothers most probably the disappointment, right? Banked on an Argentinian coach, brought in Argentinian players, have not delivered. And it seems to be Churchill Brothers have been having that problem in the last few seasons, that they're slow starters. And then somewhere they pick up and then, you know, sort of try and catch up. And then they are sort of five, seven matches short of being able to win maybe the league. And therefore, it's going to be interesting. Again, the top three as expected. And um, it's an interesting few weeks coming up uh, in the I League because, um, again, the big prizes at the end of the season promotion to the ISL. Yeah, um, like you said, Anwar, the sort of expected teams uh, leading the table: Kokola, Mohammedan Sporting, and Shrinidhi. Reckon any early predictions for uh, the team to take home the title and uh, secure promotion? I said in our preview live show that I would bet on Shrinidhi Deccan, um, yeah. and I would not change that. Um, prediction as expected, you know, Gokulam and Mohammedan are the teams to, to challenge them. I expect Churchill Brothers also to be amongst the pack. Surprise pack has been, uh, I would say, under Ishwag Ahmed, um, uh, Real Kashmir. They won their first two matches, but they lost also the second. Two. So Ishwag has some, some, some asking. So, therefore, you know, the usual suspects are there, and at the bottom, it's going to be a big fight for survival for the clubs from Manipur. I think it's a big, big fight for them given the scenario that they face back home, having to play away in Kalyani. Um, if they can survive, yeah, that would be that would be a huge upset again. And the usual suspects are there at the bottom at the table at the moment as well. Very interesting. Uh, thanks, Anava. This is a short chat and we've sort of 
covered a couple of things here and there and just yeah, yeah, just no. one thing to add uh, we we just had yesterday the start of the new i league 3 um mm-hmm. you know with with 25 teams taking part in 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 the competition and uh, the big news of course was or is that uh, former champions uh, Dempo Sports Club are back and as well as Sporting Club de Goa who actually scored 10 goals in the first game so it's great to see these traditional clubs from Goa back into the national system and uh, will in some sort of way hopefully towards the end of the I League 3 also keep a tab on what's happening in that league as well all right all right um again thanks for that update Anuman again for this uh, short chat we've like I said covered a few things and We'll be back on our live, uh, hopefully tomorrow before the India versus Kuwait game, and we'll we'll have the usual suspects here in Shire, and we'll talk about the Indian team, our expectations, lineups, all of that, predictions, and uh, have some fun with it as well. Thanks, Arava, for joining in, and thank you everybody for watching. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Sports Khabri to Arun Foot, and uh, yeah, we'll be back with more content. Bye, everyone.